Hello everybody, I'm Kaylee Fretz from Cycling Tips and we are here today to talk gravel grades. Specifically, what type of gravel you're gonna ride and therefore what type of equipment you need to ride it on. It's been a couple years now since the gravel craze has kind of taken bikes by storm, but what is gravel anyway? I mean, most of us aren't riding on little piles of rocks, right? Actual gravel. We're riding on some combination of dirt and mud and single track and double track and all sorts of different things that are not actual gravel. So we thought it's helpful to basically think of gravel as a spectrum, like a rainbow. On one end, you've got pavement, you, you know, basically road bike stuff. And on the other end of that spectrum, you have mountain bikes, basically. There's a whole lot of space in the middle and that is kind of all gravel. So we graded gravel from one to five from one, basically road bikes, to five, basically mountain bikes. Each grade in the middle there kind of corresponds with a tire size, a type of gravel bike. It is important to note that none of this stuff is, is really hard and fast rules. There are no rules here. You can ride almost anything on almost any bike. But if you wanna match your tire with the terrain, this is a good way to go about doing it. Grade one. This is basically bad pavement, very, very smooth dirt. Something you can basically ride a road bike on. Uh, you're gonna be totally happy on a 700 by 25 millimeter tire, 28 millimeter tire, something like that. Traction in grade one is not really an issue. You just want a bit higher volume than maybe what you would normally ride on a good road, just to keep yourself more comfortable. For example, personal favorite, Continental GP 5000 comes in big sizes. Get a 30 millimeter version. You'll be super, super comfortable and still be able to ride really fast. Grade two gravel. This is, we're getting a little bit more gravelly here. This is kind of the, this is the home habitat of folks like myself here in Boulder, Colorado. We have a lot of this kind of surface. You know, it's packed dirt. It's quite smooth. Maybe a little bit of loose stuff over the top. You want a slightly bigger tire and maybe a little bit more tread to help handle that loose surface. A good way to think about grade two gravel is this is the kind of road or trail or whatever that a, a two wheel drive car would have no trouble with, right? Traction is not really the issue. It's just not paved. My personal suggestion, the cycling tips pick some tire in the 30 to 32, maybe 34 millimeter range still going to roll really fast. You don't need much more volume than that. You don't need a heavier tire than that. You don't need a ton of tread. I really like the Donnelly Strata USH. It comes in a 700 by 32. I did a massive trip to Columbia a couple years ago where we were riding all sorts of stuff. Pavement, grade one, two, three gravel. It was excellent. This is also the grade of gravel where you're going to want to start thinking about tubeless tires if you weren't already on them. And that's because the more stuff that's in the road, the greater the chance of a pinch flat. Pinch flats you can only get with a tube in your tire. If you've got tubeless, you can slice them, but you can't pinch flat them. So you're going to be much better off if there's just more chunky stuff in the road going tubeless. My personal rule, if I'm running bigger than a 32 millimeter tire, 32 or larger, I'm running tubeless. Grade three gravel. All right, so the surface is still relatively smooth, but there are discernible rocks in it. That means you're gonna to wanna to run something from a 700 by 32 up to maybe a 700 by 40 millimeter tire. You want that increased volume so that you can handle those big chunky rocks that you might not see. So you don't have to spend your entire day just weaving around stuff. You can just ride right through. Personal favorite here, the cycling tips pick. Maxis Receptor 700 by 40. There it is. Thank you, intern. Here's why I like it. Nice, smooth center here, but you have these little tiny side knobs. Now, anybody from a mountain bike background is gonna look at that and maybe laugh, but it is enough to keep you upright when things get a little bit sketchy, but this tire is still gonna roll really fast. Again, this is grade three. We're talking mostly smooth with some bigger rocks thrown in. You're gonna want the high volume, 700 by 40, it's great. Grade four gravel. It's getting pretty gravelly now. We've got more loose rocks. You've maybe got some shale, some granite, some other bits get thrown in there. It's getting nasty. So you're gonna want at least a 700 by 35 millimeter tire. 
all the way up to maybe 42, 45, something like that. Higher volume if you're gonna be on rougher surfaces. By grade four, you're really getting to the point where tubeless is gonna be a must or else you're gonna end up pinch flatting a lot. You're probably gonna want some disc brakes as well because, well, most bikes these days, if you're not running disc brakes, you probably don't have room for the size tire that you need. The exception being, there are some cantilever brake bikes or V-brake bikes, particularly if you've modified little mountain bikes, something like that, that can absolutely work. And if you're on a budget, that's an awesome way to go. But if you're buying a new bike, disc brakes, no question. My personal suggestion, the cycling tips pick, I've actually got two here. Another Donnelly tire, the MSO, which I have, so I can show you. That's this one right here. Also, the Goodyear connector. I've had really good luck with the Goodyear connector. Both are very, very similar tires. 700 by 40, it's a nice big volume. And the one thing you'll really notice here is that there's a lot of tread over the top of the tire. Now, anybody who mountain bikes will already know this, but tread is a pretty good way to keep air in your tires because it just puts more rubber between the inside of the tire and all the spiky stuff on the outside of the tire. So you run a little bit more rubber over the top here. Folks doing things like dirty Kanza, for example, that are really, really sharp and nasty. You're gonna wanna run something with a bunch of tread across the entire top. That said, these tread blocks are really close together. So the tire still rolls really well. It will pack up if you're getting into mud, but if you're on relatively dry conditions, great tire, rolls fast, really hard to flat, fantastic, fantastic tire. Donnelly MSO, or like I said, the Goodyear connector, which I've actually been riding the Goodyear connectors for about a year and a half, and I've never flatted them, not once. That's incredible. Grade five gravel. We're talking basically drop bar mountain bikes here, single track, super gnarly double track, four wheel drive roads. No two wheel drive car is gonna be able to get up or down grade five gravel. Because this is basically mountain bike terrain, you're gonna wanna look for basically mountain bike tires. Volume is the real key here. You're gonna want at least a 44, 45 millimeter tire. Bigger if you're running 650B wheels, which is the smaller diameter. Smaller diameter means you can fit more rubber in a given frame, which is great. So 650 by 47 or 650 by 50, big, high volume tire is what you're gonna want if you're riding grade five gravel. My suggestion, this is a bit unusual. Oh, <laughs> the Hutchinson Override. Now, if you look at this, there's not a whole lot of tread on this, right? I'm not personally a big fan of putting mountain bike tires on gravel bikes. I think if you're gonna do that, you might as well just ride a mountain bike generally. So what I look for is a lot of volume, high volume tire that I can run at low pressure I use that to get the traction that I need. I also use that to keep the comfort that I need over really nasty surfaces, which is what you're gonna find in grade five gravel. So this is a 650 by 47 millimeter tire. Nice high volume tire you can run at, I tend to run it at 22, 23 PSI. That's gonna allow it to just move over all those rough surfaces. It also has a great sidewall, really, really hard to cut the sidewalls. Also very important for grade five gravel. Now, what's the use of this? Well, you just have to be honest with yourself. What kind of gravel are you gonna ride? Take a look at the type of gravel you're gonna ride. Match that up with the grades that we've given you, one through five. That's gonna give you an indication of what kind of bike you're probably gonna want, what kind of tires you're gonna wanna run. None of these things are hard and fast rules. That is important to mention. You can ride almost any bike on almost any surface, but if you're trying to match up the surface with your equipment, the gravel grades are a super easy way to do it. Now it's worth keeping in mind, of course, that you can always run a smaller tire in any bike, but you can't always run a bigger tire. You can run a road tire on a mountain bike if you really want to. You can't do the opposite. So keep that in mind when you're shopping, basically, when you're both buying tires and when you're buying bikes. Whatever gravel grade you think you're gonna be riding, you probably wanna have the ability to run a tire and a bike that is that capable. It doesn't mean you always have to run huge tires like that. It just means you have the ability to, should you want to. One last note. One of the best things about gravel is underbiking yourself. This is basically bringing a butter knife to a skate fight, right? You're bringing a bike that is just not really prepared for what you're about to do, sticking it onto something that is just way over its head. So it's riding single track on a road bike, things like that. It's a super fun way to make trails feel new again, uh, make 
<laughs> rides that you've done a bunch of times feel totally different and challenging, underbiking is a huge part of gravel. And so keep that in mind when you're picking tires, when you're picking equipment, when you're thinking about these gravel grades. Just because you're going to ride a little section of grade four or a little section of grade five gravel on your on your Saturday ride doesn't mean you need a massive tire and a hugely capable bike. Underbike yourself for those sections. It's super fun and it teaches you tons of valuable bike handling skills. All right, do me a favor. Drop your favorite gravel tire in the comments below and tell us what gravel grade you think it goes best with. Plus, hit like, hit subscribe, so you never miss another video.